I had this bare spot in my backyard, and I've always dreamed of having a raised garden bed to grow my own fruits and veggies. So with the help of my friends from Cabot and a virtually rot-proof new wood I found, there's a way I think you might be interested in to have a rot-resistant, beautiful garden bed that you can actually grow your own food. Check it out. I'm using is called a koya. It is radiata pine that's essentially treated in a way that makes it virtually rot proof. It can't take up moisture anymore and I get it in the rough form so I had to do some jointing and planing to get the boards down to the size that I needed. But it doesn't have any harsh chemicals like pressure treated woods so that makes it safe for a garden bed. Cool idea, especially if you've got edibles in the backyard. My supports were one and a half by one and a half boards of the Akoya. These were gonna be inside the garden bed, so you wouldn't see them really, except the tops would be poking out a little bit. So I just took some scrap wood and milled it to the right size. That way we're not wasting anything. The body of the raised garden bed was gonna be these larger pieces that were essentially gonna be two bys. So they're gonna be one and a half inches thick by five and a half inches wide. I had to mill these up, get them nice and smooth on the jointer and then the planer and then the table saw. Then it was time to head over to the miter saw and cut them all to length. I measured the distance I needed since they were all going to be the same. I only had two sets for the short sides and then two for the long sides. So I set a stop block and then I could cut everything right to length without having to measure any more than just the one time. It's a great shortcut if you're working in the shop making multiple cuts. The sponsor for this video is Cabot. They make some fantastic products for outdoor wood projects like chairs, railings, raised garden beds. Go check them out and give them some love, and thanks for their support. I took everything in pieces back to my house and decided to assemble it there since this was going to be an extremely heavy garden bed. Since all the boards were one and a half inches thick, I decided that I was going to use our one and a half inch little support bars as spacers so that I could tie everything together. I'd set one on the end, and the inside one I would pre-drill with a recessed drill bit that way I could hide my screws back in there. And for all of this, anytime you're working with a Koya, you need to pre-drill absolutely everything. The wood is so hard that it will snap off your drill bits and you need to use stainless steel fasteners for all of this. So on the back side here, I'm attaching two inch stainless steel screws. That's gonna go through to hold everything together to build the panel. And then I just took my spacers off when finished. I got a little help from my middle child assembling the larger panels since these were about eight feet long. It's four boards each, so this is going to give me a garden bed that is essentially 22 inches tall. It's going to make it easier on my back and easier to work in. Same assembly, two inch stainless steel screws, two per board, and that holds everything together. Then I needed to clear the space and level the dirt a little bit because it was not quite even, but I really didn't have much to do. Once I had it leveled, it was time to bring the pieces over and start assembling the garden bed in place. Now here we're pre-drilling right through there. It's just a simple lap joint and I'm putting two screws through each. On these, I'm using number 10, three and a half inch screws. And you can see the smoke on the drill bit because this is just, this wood is so hard. I did have to get a longer drill bit to get all the way back in there because I had snapped a couple screws. So really making sure you're using the right screws. Again, stainless steel and pre-drill everything. Once I had assembled all four corners, I was ready to put the top on. For this, I'm just using a simple one by four. So three quarters of an inch thick, three and a half inches wide, and I'm cutting mitered corners so that that's gonna cover the joints on the top, make everything look a little bit more attractive. I didn't like seeing all the screws and the joints, so this kind of final trim I'm doing here is gonna get everything looking much nicer. It's not 100% square, but I'm able to hide that 
just by laying it out the way that I am, this covers all the little imperfections in my carpentry. And I'm nailing this all together with stainless steel 18 gauge one and three quarter inch nails. Last but not least were the corner boards. These were some half inch scraps that I cut to length, again, the 22 inches. I butted them right up against there and I left a little quarter inch reveal on each corner to hide any imperfections. That's what trim is for. Then it was time to sand and sand and sand and sand some more. To really protect and beautify it, I'm using Cabot's Australian Timber Oil. You may have seen my other video, a DIY Adirondack chair, where I used the same finish. I really loved it. It looks like honey and it goes on like liquid gold. You may recognize my painting technique here. I had a master teacher who worked with me on very specific ways to get the perfect finish. You may know him. Up, down, wrong stroke. Ah, I'm only applying the Cabot Australian Timber Oil on the exterior. This is not a food safe product, so don't think you can use this on cutting boards. The inside is just gonna be dirt, right? So it doesn't matter how that looks so much, but I'm using the top and the whole body. It gave it a really nice warm glow because otherwise the Akoya can be a very white and kind of plain grain to it, but this really warmed it up nicely. Make sure you clean up any drips as you go and only one coat is all that's necessary. You're gonna let it dry for 24 hours and then we're ready to fill. I have another video on how to fill a garden bed for the best results if you wanna check that out. I was really happy with how this came out. It's not gonna kill my back to garden. We are able to plant some really delicious vegetables and fruits in here. And I've got a beautiful raised garden bed that's just kind of like a piece of outdoor furniture. And the best part is I don't have to worry about any of these plants having some chemicals with pressure treated lumber. The Akoya comes with a 25 year warranty against rot on ground contact and it's 50 year warranty above ground. So I've got a long time that I don't have to worry about this rotting. And the Australian timber oil adds an extra layer of protection and beauty that the Akoya just doesn't really have. I don't know about you, but this is one delicious project I got to do. I'd like to thank Cabot for sponsoring this video. If you've got an outdoor wood project you're itching to do, you should definitely consider their products. Check out their link in the description. And maybe you can build your own rock-proof garden bed too. If that's the case, I've got all the resources you need in the description. Be sure to smash that like button and subscribe so you can get more great content like this.